All right, so good morning. My weekend was great. How about yours? I got a few emails over the weekend. And uh, so I'll be returning emails, so send me emails. Um, let's see. So I'll go over a few things I want you to know. Make sure that uh, you tell people who aren't here to watch the review. Because I'm, I, some of these very slides are on the exam. So you want to make sure that uh, you're clear on things. I think there are 30 questions. Uh, I'm going to put the dermatome chart on there and the myotome chart somewhere so you don't have to worry about that. You could just look at the, uh, at the chart. All right, so this is just a general uh, list of things that I think should be uh, pretty familiar to you. Um, I could ask you a couple things as we go, go through here. Um, what's the superior cervical ganglion? Uh, significance in for neuro, not for growth, but for our cases. Um, preganglionic sympathetics go out, go up the chain, go up to superior cervical ganglion, synapse, and you catch a postganglionic and go up to the head. So interruption of this will give you what kind of syndrome? Horners. You know, good morning, Miss uh, Miss uh, Brayback. Good morning. You related to the to the linebacker from the uh, Patriots? No, you may ever hear of him. Vrabel. Oh, ah, oh, jeez, come on, Vrabel? <laughs> You're right. You're right. I'm kidding. You're right. I had a wrong name. All right. So uh, Horner's. Would your lid be up or down? Down. Down. Uh, pupil constricted or dilated? Constricted. Sweating or not? Embarrassed or not? Well, would you be able to show you're embarrassed? Could you vasodilate? Huh? Yeah, all right, good. Um, everybody know what a Hoffman sign is? You know that. Oh, here's one, paresthesias. What the heck is a paresthesia? Anybody know? It's a funny, funny feeling. You know, when some of these axons get irritated, they give you funny feelings. You can get a paresthesia from kind of irritating the alpha beta. You could get a paresthesia irritating a C and D, funny feelings. You can, if you irritate a C and D, you can also get pain. It sometimes it doesn't make sense that if you irritate it, you don't kill it. But you can irritate it, and it fires more, and then it gives you funny feelings. Paresthesias. Uh, layer meat, layer meat. Ah, you probably forgot that. Anybody remember what layer meat sign is? When you stretch your neck like this and stretch the dorsal columns, you get funny feelings. All right. That's been a while, right, Ben? That's the first lecture. Think what you know about the spinal cord. By some of the questions I've been getting on the, uh, on the email, you know a lot about the spinal cord. Believe me, you do. Believe me, you do. You really got things honed pretty well. Now, this one has caused me a few emails. Uh, like, what the heck is it? So I hope everybody in the, uh, in the room knows that uh, you know what the spinous process is, don't you? Huh? <laughs> Gross anatomy, right? So the spinous process is right here. So what all we've really done here, lots of traditional neuroanatomy has dorsal to top, ventral to bottom. This is just flipped like you might see an MRI. So that blue pathway down there, what could it be if it's in the ventral lateral part of the spinal cord? Could it be your dorsal columns, Mott? No. no? Mott, where are your dorsal columns there? Down a little bit? Like where, let's see, Mott, see if I can find it. Oh, probably in here. Down? Oh, down here. Well, oh, probably right in here. Where would your LCST be, Mott? You got any idea there? Right in here, maybe. Okay, good. But this is the ALS. 
Everybody know. Now, if, you're, if you don't know it, you know, you could see this. So make sure you know everything about the ALS. Um, contralateral or ipsilateral deficit? Contralateral, good. Would you get any analgesia? What is analgesia? Huh? Loss of pain, okay. Um, where are the cell bodies for the ALS? Contralateral where? Dorsal horn. So let's make this a level. What level, uh, Sarah? What level you want to make it? Huh? T1. T1. T1, Sarah. So now here's the question. Where are the cell bodies of the ALS if we're at spinal level T1? So we, we've got all the, uh, the axons in the ALS there at T1. Where would you tell me the cell bodies? Would you say contra or ipsy dorsal horn? Huh? Contra dorsal horn, but where? What levels? T1 and down, or T4 and down, or T3 and down? Is there a, is there a dorsal horn cell here at T1 that has an axon that crosses and goes into the ALS? So T1 dorsal horn cell is in that pathway. So don't confuse what you would lose versus where the cell bodies are. So if you're at T1, the cell bodies are that blue area there, the ALS would be contralateral dorsal horn T1 down, not T3. Okay, now, what if we had the ALS uh, zone? Oh, we'll go to another one for that. Um, could this give you a Babinski? Could this lesion give you a Babinski? No, okay. Pain and temperature. Uh, they, oh, I know what everybody's been emailing me about. ALS, those axons, they're, they're C's and D's, aren't they? Are they C and D axons? No. Wherever the C and D's came in over the dorsal root and synapse. So the C's and D's stop. Yeah, Mott. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will when I get to the next one, okay? I'll make sure. Well, analgesia to me is just loss of pain. So in this particular case, Mott, the only lesion we got there is in the ALS, right? So could we have analgesia? Or we do have analgesia, right? Loss of pain? You, you agree? Yeah, from, if this is T1, we'd have it from T3 and below. Okay, anesthesia, what's anesthesia, anybody know? No Both, no feeling. So you've got to get pain and temperature, two points, et cetera, combined in an area. The analgesia, you know, you've taken an analgesic haven't you, Mott? Got a, you know, pain, a headache or something hurts, no? Okay, Mott. Now, this is a brown cicard at what level? Is this vertebra or spinal? Spinal. Spinal. Now, you do, there is a uh, brown cicard on the exam. You know I'm going to give you a brown cicard. Do you want me to tell you what level? Karen, should I tell them what level or should I make? That means at least they'll know that level, right, Karen? Sure. Okay, do you want to know what level? Huh? Oh, guess. C5, <laughs> that's right. Okay, now wait a minute. C5 it is, C5 it is, but remember, that doesn't mean I can't give you another brown card, but I will give you a C5. All right, so you better know, you better know C5 cold. Cold, C-O-L-D, cold. All right, this is T1, but we can make it C5. You wanna do a C5, you wanna go, yes, Lauren. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, we won't worry about that. Okay, that's weird. I don't want to do anything weird, okay? But I could put it on there. We could do one. We could do like a coxygeal level or something like that. Why don't you, you can all try a coxygeal level late at night when you want to go to sleep. But no, Lauren, don't worry about that. 
I'm not a tricky guy. No. Right, Karen? Phil, am I tricky? No, I'm just, you know, I'm so dull and plain. Don't think that it's a trick question, because I, I, I won't trick you. But if you think it's a trick, then you'll miss it. Okay. How about this one? Well, brown card. let's make it C5, since you're going to see it. No one should miss it, but uh, let's try some things here. That's the lesion. The whole, that whole side is gone there. So where would the spasticity start? Where would the spasticity start? Did we get the LCST? Can everybody label this? What would I want to label? I'd want to label the dorsal columns, fasciculus crassus cuneatus. I'd want to label zone of this art. I'd want to label the DSCT, the LCST, the ventral horn, the anterior lateral system, the descending fibers from the hypothalamus. Now, somebody asked me yesterday, right in here, now see what happened here. We, we kind of divided up the dorsal horn into some layers. So I'd say this layer right here would be those dorsal horn cells that uh, respond to pain and have their axons that cross. Okay, don't worry about this, but what would turn on this dorsal horn cell here at T1? Anybody know what level? I got a little cell here, pain and temperature cell. What would turn it on for pain and temperature? What level? T1? T2? T3? T3, very good. All right, now, just the dorsal horn cell, not the zona lissar. Now, what if we involve the zona lissar in here? Where would we lose pain and temperature? T1, what else? T2, what else? T3, ipsy or contra? Ipsy. Then, if we're at T1, do we have, sorry, we're at C5, aren't we? If we're at C5, um, do we have a Clark's nucleus? Oh, that's a good one. Is there a Clark's nucleus here at C5? No. Why? Where is Clark's nucleus? C8 to what? L3. So there'd be no Clark's nucleus here at C5. There would be a dorsal horn cell at C5 that gets turned on by two, lo two levels below it. There is a zona lithar here at C5 that if you interrupted it, you'd get C5, C6, C7 on the ipsy side. There is a fasciculus, there is a dorsal column system here. Here we go, Mott, we're going to get to it. What would you get, Mott, if you had a lesion from here to here? At C5, Mott. Where would you lose two point, just say? You can't? Well, we get the entire dorsal columns at C5. All right. And uh, is there any unconscious proprioception in fasciculus cuneatus at C5, Mott? What levels? We're at C5 in, in fasciculus cuneatus. Is there any unconscious proprio in there? C5? What about C6? Yeah. And then what? C7? You okay, Mott? What's out here in the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract as far as unconscious proprio? At C5. That's right. That's kind of hard, isn't it? So, Mott, if you had a brown saccard here at C5, you combined everything in here, where would you lose unconscious proprio if you combined everything? You're at C5. Exactly, because some is in here, some is in here. Now, combine this, Mott. Take the uh, zona lissar at C5. Where would you lose pain and temperature? What levels? Mott, you're at C5. Uh, Mott, <laughs> we're at C5 in the zona lithar. Would you lose C5? Yeah. No pain and temperature, 5 through 7. What about, you got any two point, 5 through 7? If you had this wiped out, too. 
Well, that's all right, Mott. Well, let's, want me to help? Here, Mott. Oh, no, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. Let's do this now. If I had this lesion, I'd lose two point from C5 and below. We're at C5. You've got to think of this as C5 down here. This we'd lose C5, C6, C7. This is C5 and below. So at C5, C6, C7, then what are you? At C5, C6, C7, what would you say you are sensory-wise? Anesthetic. Everybody get that? I'm um, doing my best. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> all right, it's all right. You know, you know, Mott, spend some time on a C5 hemisection. All right, Mott? Mott? Um, would you have a Horner's? With a C5? See, it's hard. You're, you're looking at T1 and you're thinking about C5. That's what's hard. C5, Mott? You got a uh, lateral cell column at C5? <laughs> Mott. <laughs> Dr. Krabinoff taught you that. Where's the preganglionic? Where are they? What level? Good. Where's Clark's nucleus? Good. So, Mott, you got a lateral cell column at C5, that's where the brown saccharide is going to be. No. no. Why, if you had a lesion at C5, would you have any sympathetic problems? Yeah. <laughs> What's he saying? I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, do you have descending fibers from the hypothalamus traveling through C5 to get to T1? Everybody know. Say yes to me. Please. So would you have a Horner's Ipsy? Yes. yes. How about sweating from the head down? Could you sweat? No. no. Very good. Should I change a brown card to a different level? Huh? No? Okay. All right. Um, then I could say all kinds of things. Once you get that LCST, I can throw in all kinds of things, can I? At C5, whew, would you get a Babinski? Yeah, Josh. For the Horners. For the Horners. Well, for me, mostly T1. For me in neuro, I'm a simple guy. I say most of what goes up comes from T1. So if we're below T1. Yeah, if you're below T1, don't worry about it for me. You can worry about it for Karen. I like to keep things simple, but all right. So can everybody do a C5? Nicole, can you do a C5? Can I ask you one question? You got a lesion at C5 on the right. A lesion at C5 on the right. Do you have a, does your toe go up or, do you have a Babinski on the right? Yeah. Do you have clonus on the right? Yeah. Do you have increased patellar reflex on the right? Yeah. Do you have a Bing? Yeah. All right. Do you have a missing, ooh, a missing abdominal reflex on the right? If you have a lesion at C5 and the umbilical region is uh, T10 or something. You would, you would, you would. Very good. How about a Hoffman if you're at C5? Hmm. You're at C5, and most of the brachial plexus and the fingers are what, T, T10 or T1 probably? So would you have a Hoffman if you had a lesion at C5? If I put a dermatome, myotome chart on there, you'd say yes. Very good. Um, would the extensor, here's one for you. Would the, on the right side, would the extensor or the plantar reflex be flexor? Is that a true or false statement? Is the plantar reflex on the right flexor? False. Why? Because flexor is what? Normal. Very good. Very sharp this morning. Very sharp. Yeah, Ben. Would you lose the abdominal reflex because there's a lot of sensory information? No, you wouldn't lose the abdominal reflex because you lost sensory information, you would lose it mainly because you've lost the descending LCST over those lower motor neurons involved in the reflex. It's an upper motor neuron problem. You just think it doesn't work right. 
anywhere above this region, upper motor neuron above the umbilical the T10 or whatever would give it to you. Because you've lost, I know, because you've lost the descending, it's, it's just modified when you lose the upper motor neuron. Yeah, I know, it's a little confusing. Don't worry about it. C5, how about another one? C5, now is everybody ready for the C5? Any atrophy here, Ben? Any atrophy? Where? At C5. At C5. Um, where's the spasticity? Well, we did that. All right, so everybody will be ready for this. I know, I can. Don't let me down on this one. How about this one here? I'll ask you only one question. Is there any, uh, where is the loss of unconscious proprioception from the lesion in cuneatus? What levels would you lose from the unconscious proprioception if you had that lesion in fasciculus cuneatus at C4? What levels would you lose? C4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, what would you lose from the DS? And is that second white area the DSCT or not? Yeah, and what levels would you lose there? C8 and below, even though you're at C4. Lots of emails on that one. If I, could, if I could take one pathway out of the spinal cord, it'd be the DSCT. Remember that, Phil. This fellow, Phil Smith back there, he's going to take over the course after I retire. So, Phil, a lot of emails on it. I mean, you know? All right. Let's try this one. Come on, John. Yes. No. No. Don't worry about axons going through other areas and stuff like that. That's too picky for me. Do you understand what he's saying? For instance, if you, yeah, just, just stay away from that. Just put, that, Pierre, don't do that. All right. All right. Let's do this one. Now, why would I put this on here? Here, everybody is writing me about one of those, right? Guess which one I got the most emails. F, F. F, everybody's writing me emails saying, well, you didn't talk about anything in F. What are you trying to do to us? It's like that daggone unipolar neuron. Why did I ever put that? Why did I ever put that in a question? I, I thought Gary taught that. You know, I was trying to be integrative. I was. But I regret the unipolar. It's amazing. It's amazing what you guys and gals focus on. It's like, oh, he brought up something that was some obscure fact somewhere, like a unipolar neuron, you know. And I just assumed that you had had it in neurohistology. But anyway, you know, unipolar neurons are in dorsal root ganglia. Anyway, but F, the reason I put F on there, I just wanted you to know the difference between a what and a what. A funiculus, a funiculus is, that's the ventral funiculus. F, not a fasciculus. A fasciculus would only be part of a funiculus. Okay. What else did I find? Oh, okay. E up there, zona lissard, L2. Zona lissard, L2. Who wants to try it? L2 on the right. Zona lissard, L2 on the right. Where would you lose pain and temperature? L2. L3, L4. What turns on this dorsal horn cell right here? Everybody, I would love to, right here, Phil, for some reason, they have trouble with this. I guess I didn't teach it right. Here's a dorsal horn cell here, in the dorsal horn, of course, if it's in the dorsal horn. L2, what turns it on for, ouch, it says, ouch. What level? L4. What if this was, um, L4, like this L4. What turns this on if it's L4? No, there is no L6. Karen, you told him how many things there are, didn't you? Oh, man. It's amazing how many L6s and 7s there are. All right. All right, be able to do that. Count those things. 
This one, classic. Nobody should miss it. Hannah? Hannah Miller. T T3, Hannah Miller. What turns on this cell at T3, Hannah? So if you had a lesion here, where would you lose pain and temperature? T5 and down? T5 and down? Only at T5. You sure? All right, very good. Hannah? Uh, did you... T3. Um, Hannah? What? Here, Hannah. I got something way out here. Oh, this is just, just a few axons out here, T3. And uh, would your problem be ipsy or contra? Huh? What part of the body if you're a T3? Uh -huh. uh. Below? What's that mean? That's not a choice. <laughs> Just these lateral fibers here, Hannah. We're at T3, remember? Where would you say you'd lose pain and temperature? Some major structure in your body. Well, your foot. Okay, very good, Hannah. <laughs> Okay, you do know the somatotopic organization of the major pathways, I hope. Please. All right. Oh, this one. I love this one. Um, all you do here, where I, whatever I said here, look, here's the spinal cord, correct? I'm telling you that in the question that this is the right side. Come on. And so we got a lesion up here about C1 or C2, doesn't matter, but it'd be on the right. All you do is go over here and shade in a brown cicard at C2 or something, correct? You all did this. You all saw this. So this is an important, this is important because I want you to see what it looks like. Also want you to see what's ahead when you all come back. You know, we're going to move up into the brain stem. We're going to go all the way up in here. But just take this as a brown cicard at C2. All right. Anybody have any questions on that? Everybody see this in the practice questions? Everybody like it? Everybody get it right? This T6, I can ask you one question. Who wants to do this with me? Somebody, come on. Oh, Liz. Liz, too, the mustache lady. Did you see that picture she took of me with my mustache? I asked you the question. I wasn't just going to post it on the internet. <laughs> oh, it's not up yet? No. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Liz, too? Um, now, this is a good question here. Liz, too? Would you lose any unconscious proprioception with, this, with these three lesions? Any other three pathways, would you lose unconscious proprio? Huh? I thought there was some uh, unconscious proprio in fasciculus gracilis. I thought there was some unconscious proprio in fasciculus cuneatus. Good. All right. Very good. Now, I bet you there's a Horner's in this person, just from the way I drew the outline of the lesion. Probably got a Horner's here, right? Could you have a Horner's at T6 anyway? No. But did I interrupt any descending hypothalamic fibers here? If you were to guess, if you were to guess what I was trying to get at here, do I have any fibers that are shaded medial to the LCST that I'm trying to get those fibers? No. No, now you're going to say, oh, the book says some of the descending hypothalamics travel in the medial part of LCST. If I was after that, I'm, I'm shading in here. You know, it's clear what I'm after. Do you know what I'm saying? But let's say that it was clear that I was in here shading these fibers in here that you know are descending hypothalamics, would you have a Horner's? No. Could you sweat below T6? No. Good. Good. Um, what would turn on this dorsal, Liz, I'm still with you. 
Would there be a Clark's nucleus at T6? There would be. Is there a dorsal horn cell at T6? Right up here. Yes. What turns it on for ouch? From where? And down? Just, just T8? Very good. Very good. How about this one? Oh, Uh, who wants to try this one? Hannah Miller. <laughs> huh? Hannah, I'll ask you one thing. Where do you lose unconscious proprioception? I heard that. First of all, are any you have to worry about it. what pathway are you going to think about first? Yeah, where is that? You know where it is? Yeah, on the diagram. All right. Oh, it's on left and right. <laughs> where would you lose your unconscious proprio from losing the DSCT at T1? Huh? I thought the biggest it ever got was C8 and below. But a T1, the biggest it got a T1 is T1 and below, right? Okay, good. Hannah, would you have a Horner's? Yeah, would your pupil be large or small? Why? Okay, if you're a T1, and look at, look at this. For those of you who think that I'm a tricky guy, look at this. Here, here I'd say it's a lateral horn, but not a, you know, I could have done better than that. But look at all these fibers I'm getting here, too. All right, Hannah, what would turn on the dorsal horn cell here? T3, very good. And Hannah, ooh, Hannah, let's, let's say some virus, Hannah, just attacked these axons right here. Where would you lose two point? Just inside the border. T7, very good. And Hannah, if you're a T1, what would be the most lateral fiber in fasciculus cuneatus? T1, very good, very good, very good. Hmm. Bilateral Babinskis, right? Bilateral bings, bilateral bongs, clonus, bilateral hyperreflexive tendon knee, bilateral, hmm, I don't know, about a Hoffman? Huh? Karen, if you lost T1, could you do this? Okay, so you wouldn't have a Hoffman. Okay, good. But I put that on the chart so you'd know that. Oh, uh, what else? Okay, good, 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 good. You're doing great. Oh, this one caused a lot of problems. What are you, Big John, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at the dorsal surface of the spinal cord, right where the fasciculi are getting very big, and there's a fasciculus crassulus. Do you see them both? Two of them on the midline where things are getting big because you got all the fibers there. And you also, lateral to that, got two fasciculi what? Cuneati. So this is fasciculus gracilis. This is fasciculus gracilis. This is fasciculus cuneatus cuneatus. And you can handle that. All right? So you'll see this. What the heck? This one? Is this fair? I know what everybody emails. They got a lot of emails. Yes. Yeah. What, what? Is there no Yes. Karen says, I'm sorry. That's a good question for clarifying. Good, I'm glad. Here, can everybody handle this? Where do you think cervical is? At the top or bottom? Huh? Top up there, and this would be sacral, and so 
you know, I think I asked some questions. Where, are, what section would have the, the least amount of ALS fibers? What would you say? Cervical or sacral? Huh? Least, the least amount of ALS fibers. Up there at cervical or down here at E? How big would the ALS be when you're just starting off? Not very big. Everybody agree with that? How many LSCT fibers? How many LSCT fibers do you think are way down here? Are there many left? No. Did cervical get out? They got out. Thoracic got out. Lumbar got out. The only thing down here is, is sacral. Is there a good lateral horn right here? Look at that. Is that pretty good? So you know this is what? What level you think that'd be in general? Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral? Okay, you'd know that. Don't let it scare you. At least I put them in order. There's this one. Oh, that one. What the heck is this doing in here? Huh, let's integrate. Oh, I know. It's a, what the heck? That's a disc. It's a disc, and it's not even the disc from the case. Well, what's this? What's, what, what do you think this is? What is that right here? Huh? Yeah, so what would it be? C2. You get this in ARC? Karen, did they get this in ARC? All right. So let's go down here. Let's count. Ready? This is the disc between 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is between six, seven. So what nerve would it get? By C six, seven gets seven. C four, L four, five gets five. L five, S one gets S one. Don't worry about it. This isn't on there. I don't know how it got in here. I just want to put a picture of myself up there. This one's on there. Why? Because this is one of the most important things you'll ever have that you should carry forward for the rest of your lives. Horners, horners on which side? Which side's the horners? His right. So could I have a lesion in the spinal cord at T5? Huh? No. Could I have a lesion in the spinal cord at C7? How about C7? Yeah, interrupts it. The Horner's man you'll see. The Horner's man you're going to see probably for the rest of your life. Now, what's he doing here? What I should have put in here was he or she, the doctor, is moving the toe up and down with the eyes closed. So, you know, if, somebody's, if you wake up and somebody's moving your toe up or down, they're testing your what? Conscious proprioception, <laughs> Right? And if you had a lesion, now, let's see. Let's see where you would lose that conscious proprioception to the toe. I'll give you a couple examples. Would you, let's see, what toe is that? That's the right. Could you lose this? Would you not be able to tell whether your toe is being moved up or down or what position it is? If you had a lesion in the fasciculus, gracilis at C1. Fasciculus, right fasciculus, gracilis at C1. Could you tell this? No. How about fasciculus, gracilis at um, T1? No. How about fasciculus, gracilis at C8 or C5? How about our brown saccard? C5. Would you be able to tell the position of your big toe? No. All right, now get ready. Get ready for something that will shock you. What if this fellow was a diabetic, or I can't tell if it's a fellow or, or a man or woman. Let's, I can't. Um, why, can you? 
Huh? Oh, not going there either. Uh, <laughs> now let's say that this patient had diabetes, and there's a chance to have a peripheral polyneuropathy, and it involves all size fibers. No, no, no. I can't do that, can I? It involves alpha betas in the nerve out here, not in a fasciculus crassus or spinal cord, but in the nerve. It's a large fiber polyneuropathy, hands and feet. So if it's a large fiber, it's got the alpha betas. Could they tell the position of their toe in space? No. No. Everybody understand that? It doesn't matter where you get the alpha beta, does it? You could get it in the nerves or in the spinal cord or up in the, up in the brainstem. But in a polyneuropathy, it gets things right out here. All those axons die very distally. If you lose an alpha beta, you lose an alpha beta. Okay, that's very good. I'm glad you got that. What did I do with my thing? I, now I can't find my little controller. Huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. The nerves can regenerate. They can sometimes. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's try one. Oh, this one. I won't mess with this. I will ask you one question now. Uh, Mott, are you coming back? Cool down a little bit? Mott, where's the LCSD here? Does it start here and go to here? Or you think this is all the LCST and all this is a DSCT? All this? Okay, so this is okay, isn't it? You agree? All right, let me ask you a question. Would this person have a Babinski on the Ipsy side? Bobby can help you. Bob? Why? Yeah, all these are okay. Everybody get that? You know the somatotopic organization of the LCSD. What's this most, uh, Bob? What would be the most medial fiber at C2 in the LCST? Coming out. What would be the most lateral fiber? Sacral. What if this was T8, Bob? Bobby, we change this to T8. What's the most medial fiber in the LCST? What's the most lateral? Good. What if you're down, what if you're at L5, Bob? What's the most medial fiber? What's the most lateral? Good. All right. Remember, you got to do the, you know, take the level, the most medial fiber is getting off. Is that Clark's nucleus or not? Huh? Would you know that? I think I put a, I labeled it. It's Clark's nucleus. So what levels would you see this? What levels would you see a good Clark's nucleus? C8 to where? L3. Um, what kind of fibers does it receive? Three types. 1A, 1B, 2. Do those same 1A, 2, and B also, also go down to the ventral horn? Or do they, when they come in, do they only go to Clark's nucleus? Or can they go down to the ventral horn for your reflexes? Yeah, could be on one axon given two branches. Could you know? So it's just not going up the DSCT. It also they're going down for reflexes. Let's try. The, oh, would everybody know what fasciculus? Yeah, question. Yeah, hang on. That one right there. Okay, wait a minute. That one? Okay, you're me. Would I, would I, if I wanted to get that tract, what would I do? Man, I'm alive, it'd be going. Is that medial border got a thick line? Did I draw a thick line for the medial border of the LCSD? Huh? I mean, I, is, see the border? I'm not, see this border there? 
that line? Is that pretty good? So I'm not medial to it. I'm not trying to trick you. OK. Everybody know what fasciculus this is? Everybody know we're staining for cells or myelin? Myelin. Very good. That's the same thing. Here. This one? Too, many, too much worry. Too much worry for reflexes. You think I'm going to trick you on the reflexes? I am not. I am not going to trick you on the reflexes. Now, let me ask. Now, I'm going to leave you with, I want you to think about this. Let's say we had a big firing up here in the motor cortex on my right side. Which, what's going to move, my left or right side? My left. Because these cortical fibers come down. Where are you? Cross. What pathway would this be right here? That I've got D. What pathway would they travel in in the spinal cord if they start in cortex and go to the spinal cord? LCST, is that right? Is it usually in this area? Huh? Yeah, this looks like lumbar to me. I don't know. But look here. One fiber comes down to the grunt, right? What's the grunt? What would you call this grunt? Lower motor neuron. And it goes out to the what? Extrafusal or intrafusal? Extra. Causes contraction of it, doesn't it? All right. At the same time, you can also, coming down the corticospinal tract, would be some axons that go into the gammas. Now, the gamma efferents are not going to turn on the muscle, the extrafusal muscle. They're going in and kind of stretch the ends of the bag, for instance, and put some tension on this so that this little 1A fiber coming through here that's all coiled up will stretch a little bit, even though the muscle is being shortened by the alpha motor neuron. That's all I want you to know. I want you to know that we can't control the sensitivity of our spindles by the cortical spinal tract, so that when we're shortening a muscle, we're also keeping the intrafusal fiber sensitive during that shortening. If we didn't have the gamma efferents, if you shorten a muscle, that whole bag would go slack. I'm not going to trick you. Yeah? I would say all kinds. Anytime the muscle's shortening. Can you all do? Yeah? Cortical spinal tract. Exactly. Very good. Could everybody do this? Um, let me ask you one question. What, you got this lesion. Any anesthesia? Would you have anesthesia anywhere on this, this patient? No. Why not? You got the zona lissar, don't you? That would lose pain and temperature on both, you know. But do you have any lesions here in the DSCT? Or I mean in the, in the dorsal columns? No. So think about it. You wouldn't have any anesthesia. Um, all right. What, this one? Huh? Huh? I'm not that smart, Pierre. They, they, they look symmetrical to me. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. This is too easy, isn't it? Where would you lose unconscious propria? Huh? What levels would you lose unconscious propria? Huh? DSCT and C2, where would you lose your unconscious proprio? C8 and below. Alpha, beta, 1A, conscious proprioception. Is this an alpha, beta? Or is this a 1A, B2, or a C and D? If you're going to a joint capsule for conscious proprioception, it'd be a what? Alpha, beta. Dorsal root or ventral root? Dorsal root, you can answer anything there. Oh, another one of these. I don't know why, but I, I, I put them in order. So which one do you think is sacral? D or A? D. Which one would be thoracic? Beautiful thoracic. B. Which one's cervical? Kind of flattened? 
See how this is kind of flattened? You know what I mean by flattened? Flat? See how round this is? See how skinny, you know, this one is not much going on here. The cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral. It's good to integrate on these because then you start thinking, well, what's, what pathways are there? Which ones aren't there? Things like that. Oh, my God. Think about these lesions. Oh, my gosh. Where? Oh, now, let's do this. Hang on. Let's do this. I'm so sorry. This will be the last slide. We got a lesion in the middle, and we got a lesion in the ventral horns. The lesions are not at the same level. The lesion in the middle starts rostral and ends caudal to the two lesions out in the ventral horn. So you got a lesion in the middle, and then, then all of a sudden you got the lesion in the middle and the lateral horns, and then the lesion in the middle stops. Do you understand kind of what I'm trying to say? So where would you lose pain and temperature in this case if it started in the middle at C2 and went to C8? Where would you lose pain and temperature? From what levels? From the, from the lesion in the middle getting the decussating fibers. Where would you lose pain and temperature? What levels? Who says it would start at C4 and go to two levels lower than C8, which would be what? T2. Now, what if I ask you where the cell bodies of those axons that I've cut from C2 to C8? Now you have to be careful. I want to know where the cell bodies are of the axons that you cut in that lesion that goes from C2 to C8. Where are the cell bodies now? Be careful. Where are the cell bodies for those axons? What levels? Huh? C2 to where? C8. That's exactly right. So now when you take the lower motor neuron lesions there on the side, think about what you'd get there. How would you, say you had the lower motor neuron problems there from C2 to C8. Could you have any atrophy if you had ventral horns damage on each side. Could you have any atrophy? Yeah. Could you have any hyper hyperreflexia? No. Could you have um, hyporeflexia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. So who's next? You are, Karen? Another anatomy review? You got two. I got one. All right, so I, I'm sorry, I took three minutes away. So, I'll, okay, now, uh, good luck on the exam and do the practice questions. You know, you'll be fine. And then I'll see you next Monday for the beginning of brainstem.